Today we'll be looking at some very good protein sources and how we can properly use them to replace our soya beans. Mind you that some of them cannot replace soya beans fully. And so if you'd have to use them, you'd have to use a percentage of that ingredient with some amount of your soya beans in addition. And some can replace soya beans fully, 100% replacement. Now for each ingredient, we'll be looking at its crude protein content as well as its crude fiber content. And then by comparing it to the crude protein and crude fiber content of soya beans, we are going to be able to determine the maximum amount or the inclusion levels of these ingredients in our pig feed formulations. So like I promised in our last session, before this video ends, we would have gotten answers to these two questions that we pinned down. So the first being that, is there an alternative to soya beans for protein? And then the second being, would you recommend or advise sunflower cake as a substitute for soya beans? So now let's get right into it. Now in the first place, why is soya beans our most preferred protein source in our pig feed formulations? Number one, soya beans is used due to its high digestibility. Now when we say that our soya beans is highly digestible, what do we mean? It means that the nutrients in our soya beans are easily broken down. And once they are broken down, they are absorbed and utilized by the pigs. And once our pigs are able to use most of the nutrients, it's going to lead to a faster growth rate. This means that as compared to other protein sources, when you feed soya beans to your pigs, they are able to use most of it in growth. Now another reason why soya beans is the most preferred protein source is the fact that it has a balanced amino acid profile. What does this mean? It means that our soya beans is rich in the amino acids that are essential or that are required for the fast growth of our pigs. So when you take the amino acid profile of soya beans, it is rich in lysine, tryptophan, threonine, and even though it has lower amount of our methionine and cysteine, which are the sulfur containing amino acids, when you look at it generally, we would say that it has a balanced amino acid profile, which is very essential for the growth of our pigs. Another reason is that compared to other protein sources, our soya beans has a relatively high energy content. So by adding soya beans to your feed, you are increasing the energy content of your feed as well. So our soya beans does not only provide proteins, but it also increases the energy levels of our feed and you know that our pigs need feed containing a high amount of energy and so soya beans will help them in that regard now do you know that compared to other protein sources another advantage our soya beans has is the fact that it can be used alone as the only protein ingredient in our feed formulations that means that when you have soya beans in your feed formulation you don't necessarily have to add another protein ingredient to it but for the other protein ingredients, you have to still add some soya beans or some fish meal to it to balance it out. So now let's look at the other ingredients that can replace soya beans as a protein source. So first on our list is fish meal. We also have granite cake, sunflower cake, cotton seed cake, sesame seed cake, blood meal, and then bone meal. So now let's look at the average crude protein content and the average crude fiber content of these ingredients. So for fish meal, it has a high average crude protein content of about 55% and an average crude fiber content of about 1%. For granite cake, it has an average crude protein content of about 45% and an average crude fiber content of about 5.7%. Now for sunflower cake, it has an average crude protein content of about 45% and an average crude fiber content of about 13%. Now similarly, cotton seed cake also has an average crude protein content of about 40% and an average crude fiber content of about 13%. Now for sesame seed cake or meal, it has an average crude protein content of about 40% and an average crude fiber content of about 7.3%. Now let's look at that for blood meal and bone meal. Blood meal has an average crude protein content of about 80% and an average crude fiber content of about 1%. Quail's bone meal has an average crude protein content of about 50% and an average crude fiber content of about 2%. Now for our star ingredients, which is our soya beans, it has an average crude protein content of about 45% and an average crude fiber content of about 
3.5%. Now for these ingredients that we've listed, there are two things that you have to note. One, their crude protein and crude fiber content can vary. And this variation is mainly based on the variety of the ingredients. So if the ingredient has different varieties, some varieties will have higher fiber or higher crude protein or lower fiber or lower crude protein. Do you get it? So that will cause a variation. Now, another thing that will cause a variation is the method of processing. So now, how can we do a proper replacement? How much or up to what percentage of these alternative ingredients can we use in our pig feed formulations? Up to what extent can they replace soya beans? So first, let's take fish meal. Now let's compare our fish meal to soya beans in order to do a proper replacement. So in terms of the protein content, fish meal has a relatively higher amount of protein as compared to soya beans. So remember we said fish meal has a crude protein content of about 55%, whilst our soya beans has an average crude protein content of about 45%. Now comparing in terms of their fiber content, our fish meal has a lower crude fiber content of about 1%, and soya beans, on the other hand, has a crude fiber content of about 3.5%. Now, in terms of the amino acid content, both fish meal and soya beans have a very good amino acid profile. They are rich in most of the essential amino acids. However, fish meal has an added advantage of being rich in methionine, which is a sulfur-containing amino acid. Another advantage of fish meal is the fact that it contains omega-3 fatty acids. Now, these omega-3 fatty acids are very good as they help in improving the immune function of our pigs. Now, an improvement in the immune system or the immune function of your pigs will mean that they'll be able to withstand diseases or they'll be able to fight off diseases better, leading to an overall healthy pig. And so this is very good. Now, up to what percentage can we use fish meal or up to what percentage can fish meal replace soya beans in our pig feed formulations. Fish meal can replace soya beans up to 100% replacement levels. So that means that you can do 100% replacement. You can completely take out soya beans from your pig feed formulation and put in fish meal. Now let's also take granite cake and see how we can properly replace soya beans with granite cake in our pig feed formulations. So now comparing granite cake and soya beans, in terms of their protein content, granite cake has a similar crude protein content as soya beans. That is, they both have an average crude protein content of about 45%. Now in terms of their crude fiber content, granite cake has a relatively higher crude fiber content, which is about 5.7% as compared to soya beans, which has an average crude fiber content of 3.5%. Now let's compare the amino acid content. Granite cake has a poor amino acid profile or a poor amino acid content. Now we already know that our soya beans has a balanced or a good amino acid profile. However, an added advantage of granite cake is the fact that it is very palatable. And so it will improve or increase feed intake by your pigs. Now, drawing from this comparison that we've just done, it is obvious that our granite cake is not on the same level as soya beans. Now, how can we do a proper replacement? To use granite cake in place of soya beans, it means that you have to add some amino acids to your feed. So the amino acids that are deficient in our granite cake, the lysine, the methionine, you have to add some to the feed. Now, also, because granite cake has a relatively higher fiber content, once you're introducing it into your feed formulation in place of soya beans, you would have to reduce the quantity of the fiber ingredient that you're adding to your feed. So let's say maybe you were adding 20% of wheat bran to your feed, which is a fiber source. You would have to reduce that 20% to let's say 15%. So you have to do that adjustment because our granite cake is bringing in additional fiber. So what is the percentage of granite cake that can replace soya beans properly. Now, in terms of percentages, it is recommended that you do a 20% replacement of soya beans with granite cake. So for our next ingredients, we are going to combine these three ingredients and compare them to soya beans and see how we can properly include them in our feed formulations. Now, these three ingredients are sunflower cake or sunflower meal, and then cotton seed cake, and sesame seed cake. So from our crude protein and crude fiber table, you realize that these three ingredients 
have similar crude protein content of about 40% and then the crude fiber content of about 13% with sesame seed cake being the only one that has a crude fiber content of about 7.3%. Comparing these ingredients to soya beans, in terms of the crude protein content, they have a slightly lower crude protein content of about 40%. While our soya beans has a crude protein content of about 45%. Now, in terms of their fiber content, they have a relatively higher fiber content than our soya beans. Now, also, in terms of their amino acid content, our soya beans has a much better amino acid profile than these ingredients. Now, a critical thing about these ingredients is that they have very poor digestibility especially when they are included at higher rates in our feed formulations. So you add too much of these ingredients to your feed, it will be very hard for your pigs to digest. And you know that our soya beans has a high digestibility. So in terms of digestibility, these ingredients are like very low on the digestibility radar, whilst our soya beans is up there. Now, even though these ingredients have these downsides, we want to include them in our feed. So how can we do a proper replacement? One you have to supplement your feed with amino acids. If you have to use these three ingredients, you have to add some amino acids to your feed to create a balanced diet for your pigs. Also, because these ingredients are high in fibers, when you include them in your feed, you would have to reduce the quantity of your main fiber ingredients in the feed. Do you get it? So if your fiber ingredients were like 30% in the feed, you'd have to reduce that quantity. To maybe 20 percent because these ingredients are going to supply additional fibers to the feed number three you have to add enzymes to your feed if you are to include these ingredients in your feed like i said earlier these ingredients have a low digestibility and this is due to the fact that they contain complex carbohydrates complex proteins complex fibers and so it is difficult for the pigs to break them down so now when you add enzymes to the feed, this is what the enzymes do. The enzymes break down the complex carbohydrates, proteins, and fibers. And once they are broken down, it will release the nutrients for the pigs to absorb and utilize in their growth. Now, these are bonus points that you have to note. Please make sure that these ingredients are properly processed before you include them in your pig feed. Because mind you, these ingredients have anti-nutritional factors. And these anti-nutritional factors include tannins, lectins, saponins. Now, these anti-nutritional factors will basically hinder the growth of your pigs because they'll be binding to the essential minerals, they'll be binding to the proteins, the nutrients in your feed. And they'll also prevent absorption of these nutrients by your pigs. So in order to get rid of these anti-nutritional factors, you have to make sure that your sunflower cake your cotton seed cake and your sesame seed cake are very well processed. Even your soya bean meal, you have to make sure that it is well processed before use. If you're interested in knowing how these ingredients can be properly processed and also know a lot more about these anti-nutritional factors, the types of anti-nutritional factors and how they hinder the growth of your pigs, kindly comment down below. Maybe I may make a separate video talking about them. Now for the percentage replacement of soya beans, with these ingredients, it is recommended that you do up to 20% replacement of soya beans with sunflower cake, cotton seed cake, or sesame seed cake. So now let's look at our next two ingredients, which is bone meal and blood meal. We are going to compare each of them to soya beans. So now let's take bone meal and compare it with uh, soya beans. Now in terms of the protein content, bone meal and soya bean meal have similar protein content of about 50% and 45% respectively. Now in terms of their fiber content, bone meal has a slightly lower fiber content compared to soya beans. Now in terms of their amino acid content, soya beans has a more balanced amino acid profile than bone meal. Now an added advantage of bone meal is the fact that it contains the mineral calcium. And you know calcium is essential in bone formation and bone development in our pigs. And so it is very good. Now there's a caution on adding excess bone meal to your feed because adding excess bone meal to your feed will mean that you are shooting up the calcium content of your feed and this will lead to mineral imbalances, which is not so good for your pig because it can even lead to digestive issues. Now bone meal is not so palatable, so adding too much of it 
will reduce the palatability of your feed. And in turn, this will reduce feed intake by your pigs, which will eventually lead to a slower growth rate. So how can we do a proper replacement of our soya beans with bone meal? The recommended maximum amount or percentage of bone meal that you can add to your feed is 5%. So to do a proper replacement, you have to be within this range. Do not add more than 5% of bone meal to your feed. Also, when you add bone meal to your feed, it is recommended to reduce the amount of DCP or dicalcium phosphate that you add to your feed. So now let's take blood meal and see how we can properly replace our soya beans with blood meal. So now by comparing blood meal and soya beans, in terms of their protein content, blood meal has a far higher crude protein content of about 80% compared to soya beans, which has a protein content of 45%. Now, in terms of their fiber content, blood meal has almost no fiber at all, just about 1% crude fiber, while soya beans has a crude fiber content of 3.5%. Now, let's compare the amino acid content. Soya beans, as we already know, has a balanced amino acid profile. Now, blood meal, on the other hand, is rich in certain amino acids, but very poor in other amino acids. So, specifically, blood meal is rich in the amino acids such as lysine, leucine, but it's very poor in the sulfur-containing amino acids. That is the methionine and the cysteine. So it is evidence that blood meal has an imbalance of amino acids. Now, a downside of blood meal is that it's not palatable and it may reduce feed intake by your pigs. Now, take these precautions before adding blood meal to your feed. Make sure that your blood meal that you're adding to the feed is well processed. Also, ensure that you add the blood meal to your feed only when you're ready to serve it to your pigs. Don't add it to your feed and then bag it and store it for a long time. Because of its smell, it will start smelling. So make sure that you add blood meal to your feed only when you are ready to serve. When you add blood meal to your feed, it can last for a few days before going bad, about four days before it will start having that bad smell. So how can we properly substitute or how can we properly replace soya beans with blood meal? Number one, make sure that you are balancing out the amino acid content of the feed. Because mind you, blood meal is going to shoot up the lysine content of your feed. So when you add your other ingredients and you balance it out, you realize that you may not need to add any supplemental lysine to your feed. However, on the other hand, when you add blood meal to your feed, it will lower the methionine content of your feed. And so you have to balance it out and then check the amount of supplemental methionine that you have to add to your feed. So what percentage of blood meal can be added to your feed? It is recommended that you add up to a maximum of 5% blood meal in your feed. So that means that blood meal cannot fully replace soya beans. It can replace up to only 5%. Do not go above it because we do not want to shoot up the lysine content of our feed beyond acceptable levels. You get it. So remember that for fish meal, we can do up to 100% replacement. For granite cake, we can do up to 20% replacement. For sunflower cake, cotton seed cake, and sesame seed cake, we can do up to 20% replacement. And then for blood meal and then bone meal, we can do up to 5% replacement. Now, these replacement levels are recommended by several experiments that have been conducted. Now, in making feed formulations, when I try going beyond these recommended levels, what I realize is that the fiber content of the resultant feed formulation that I get will be too high, much higher than the pigs require. Do you get it? So if you try going beyond the acceptable levels and then you do your calculations, you realize that you are not getting a good feed formulation. So I will recommend that you stay within these levels in order to give you a very good feed formulation, one which has highly digestible proteins, one which has a balanced amino acid profile, one which has a good amount of energy and overall will promote growth of your pigs. Remember that we are aiming for maximum growth of our pigs and so going according to the requirements of the pigs when making the food formulation is very important. We shouldn't only consider saving costs because when you always want to save costs, you end up making a feed formulation that does not meet your pigs requirements. So I hope that our two questions that we had previously have been answered. And so that is all for now. And I'll see you in the next video. It's a bye for now. Bye-bye.